So, church, today I just want to will come before you today and let you know that I'm excited for two or three different reasons. Number one, I'm excited, as you heard Pastor Mark say in, in his uh, video at the very first of it, we've, we've secured the land next door. Now, let me tell you why I'm excited, because about 30 years ago, there was about a seven-year-old little Mikey Okay, let's not make that joke. There wasn't a little Mikey. I was probably in husky pants and a husky t-shirt and all that. So about 30 years ago, seven-year-old Mikey standing on the porch steps of old Glencoe Church of God that's still, uh, that was in our parking lot, where our parking lot is today, and, and, and just looking around, and, and like I felt like we were landlocked. There was stuff beside us, behind us, like we weren't going anywhere. Fast forward 30 years and we got some land to play with, y'all. We've got an awesome, awesome, awesome property here. And I'm excited to see what the ministries here at Faith Worship Center are going to do with that land. I'm excited, and, and I can't wait to see how Faith Worship Center is going to impact the Glencoe and Gadsden area. So I'm excited about that. Number two, I'm excited about the Word today. Why am I excited? Because God's got it for you. If you're watching at home today, this message is for you. It's going to speak to you. I know it will. Uh, speaking about my message, I have to say thank you to my beautiful wife who, who stretches me as a minister. You know, I found out Thursday night that uh, I'm just going to be open and honest with you guys real quick. I uh, found out Thursday night you know, that, that I was going to be speaking today. What's the first thing I do? I go in my Rolodex of sermons, and I, and I start flipping through them like, oh, that, uh, no, no, no. And she's like, why preach something old when you could preach something new? And I was like, oh, wow, you're, you, you're, you're speaking volumes there. So at that moment, I began to pray and, and uh, see what God would lay on my heart. And uh, today I'm excited about a brand new sermon uh, that's straight off the grill, if you will. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's ready. I'm excited for what it's going to do. And number three... I'm excited, and this is about to blow some people's minds, I'm excited about the day and time that we're living in. What, Mikey, you're excited about the day and time we're living in? Yes, because the world needs Jesus. And I am that vehicle to take Jesus to the world. You are that vehicle to shine the light of Christ to the world. So, so when you see the bad on the news, and when you see the bad in the newspapers, and, and, and on the internet and everything, just remember, you serve a king that's above every king. You serve a name that's above every name, and you need to be the light that people need to see in this world. So let's get excited about the day and time we live in, and let's thank God for the opportunities. See, uh, um, he didn't give it to Moses or Peter or Paul. He didn't give today to them. Why? Because he knew they couldn't handle it. But guess who can? We can. He's given today 2021 to you and I to do something to make an impact for the kingdom. So going, uh, so I'm excited to be in, in the uh, pulpit today, filling in for Pastor. They're going to be back next week. Let's continue to pray for Pastor Mark and Miss Kathy uh, as God continues to work in their lives. But today I want to get to a uh, to a thought. It's simple. It's something that happens every day. Today I want to talk about a visitor, if you will that no doubt about it, has knocked on our doors before. It's a visitor that's knocked on our doors before. Many of us have opened the door for this visitor. Some have sat idly by as the visitor knocked and knocked and knocked and knocked, but ultimately left. Today, church, I'm going to talk about the visitor that we know as opportunity. This morning, we're going to look at the simple thought of Opportunity Knocks. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for today, God. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to, to, to be in this spot, Father God, to deliver a word that needs to be heard today, Father God. I pray that not one word be Mikey's words, but every word be your word, God. And Lord, that you will lead me and guide me through this whole time that I'm speaking today, God. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. Now, I pray right now that this word touches hearts and touches lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you got your Bibles, and it's going to be on the screen, Galatians chapter 10, or J Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, it says this. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. Opportunities 
belong to all of us. Every last one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, have opportunities. You have opportunities on a daily basis. Now, real quick, I want to throw in here what opportunities we're talking about. I'm talking about opportunities today that will allow you to impact the kingdom. Opportunities is going to help you uh, make Jesus' name famous. It's going to help you impact the kingdom and do things for the kingdom. Those type of opportunities, God-driven, God-appointed opportunities is, is the opportunities I'm talking about. So I want to go ahead and get that out of the way so we know what opportunities I'm talking about today. But every last one of us have had or have or will have, and chances are before you lay down tonight, you're going to have one today. You've got opportunities. Now, they're going to show up in different forms or ways to each of us, but we've got opportunities nonetheless. And, and here's what I want early on in my, my sermon today. I want you to lose that thinking that, oh, I'm too young. I don't have opportunities. I'm too old. I don't have opportunities. I'm too quiet and shy. I don't have opportunities. I'm too loud. Nobody wants to talk to me. I don't have opportunities. Every last one of us has opportunities. We all have opportunities. Opportunities for greatness. Opportunities to achieve success, to better ourselves, and to serve God in a greater capacity. Tim Tebow... The University of Florida Heisman Trophy winning quarterback. Some of y'all may be familiar with him. He's a decent ball player. Uh, said this quote, and I loved it when I read it. When I was preparing this, I read it. Fantastic. Spoke volumes. He goes on to say, honestly, I'm just trying to do the best I can with every opportunity I'm given. With every opportunity I'm given. He goes on to say, and when I'm giving the opportunities... Make the most of them. So he wants, to, he wants to do the best he can with every opportunity, but then with every opportunity, he wants to make the most of every opportunity. Man, if we could just catch that mindset in the body of Christ, if we could just grab a hold of that thinking as Christians, that, hey, every opportunity, I'm going to make the most of it. Now, this opportunity may not be as fruitful as that opportunity, but I made the most of that opportunity. Are we making the most of our opportunities? When opportunity knocks, and it will, what, what are we doing? What, what are we doing? When opportunity knocks, are we quick to open the door? So, quick story. Uh, Cass had taken a group down to, to Springville yesterday to Girls' Day Out. Uh, I, I was doing met sermon prep. Cass came in. She's tired. I don't... Uh, I didn't want to cook, whatnot, so we called up America's Best, obviously, and ordered some pizza from there. Uh, I didn't wait for the pizza delivery person to, to knock on our door. I saw him drive up the driveway. Mikey was hungry. I met that opportunity on my front steps. A few more of us need to start meeting the opportunities at the front doorstep that God puts in our path. We sit there, what had happened if I just let the pizza delivery person just knock and knock and knock and knock? Ultimately, my opportunity to get my big cell fed would have drove out of my driveway and took it back to America's Best, and I would have been without a pizza. I had to get up. I had to make a move. I had to open the door. I had to go meet that opportunity. But here's the deal. A lot of times when opportunities knock and we just, we just sit around like that opportunity is a door-to-door -door salesperson or we sit around like that opportunity is like the relative that pulls up in the driveway that you're like, hey, if we sit down, sink down in our chairs, turn the TV off, if we just act like nobody's here, even though there's 14 cars in the driveway, they'll leave and we won't have to talk to them. Or, you know what I'm saying? We act like that with opportunity a lot of times. When opportunity's knocking on our door, we ignore it. We ignore it. We, we, we want the opportunity to go away when, as a Christian, our mindset should be the reverse. I should be waiting on the next knock, answering that opportunity. Then I should be ready for the next knock. I should be prepared. I should be prepared to answer each knock, answer each opportunity. See, church, life 
is made up of moments. Or for this matter, opportunities. And it's how we answer those moments that matter. It's how we answer those moments. I've heard it said like this. Today is God's gift to you. Today is God's gift to you. But how you use today is your gift to Him. That's your gift to Him. Is today the day that you'll use that opportunity for impact and to make a difference? Or is it going to be another day that we allow another opportunity to slip away? I want to ask you, church, today, have you ever heard the saying, seize the opportunity? Seize the opportunity. If you haven't, or maybe if you have, I'm still going to break it down for you. Opportunity is this, a combination of circumstances favorable for a person. A combination of circumstances favorable for a person. Now, what does seize mean? To take possession of suddenly and by force. Why is, it a, why is it important to take a hold of your opportunity suddenly? Why is it so important to take a hold of your opportunity suddenly and, and just go get it? Well, here, 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 here's the spill on that. Opportunity is only going to knock for so long, and then it's gone. Opportunity is going to knock, and then it's gone. It's not going to sit there all day for you to just decide, hey, now I need to go do it. Now I need to go take advantage of that opportunity. It's going to knock for a little bit, but then eventually it's going to get in this car and leave. That opportunity is going to be gone. Opportun Hear this, and if you're writing stuff down at home, please write this down. Opportunity doesn't wait for the lazy, the lackluster, or the lackadaisical. Hear that again. Opportunity doesn't wait for the lazy. Opportunity doesn't wait for the lackluster. And opportunity doesn't wait for the lackadaisical. When opportunity knock, seize it. Opportunities are presented to us on a daily basis. My question today is, what are we doing with them? What are we doing with them? Are we, are we using them to our fullest? How are we answering opportunities knock? What are we doing to seize the opportunities? Just for a few moments, I'm going to give you three ways that we can answer opportunities knock. Three ways that we can answer opportunities knock. Number one, it's real simple. It's almost if there was like scientific laws of answering a door. This would have to be number one all the way around. There's no way around it. Get up. Number one, get up. Just as if anyone was knocking on your door at home, you got to get up and answer it and see who it is. Or at least you got to click your little ring remote button to see who's on the camera out front. You, you got to do something. You got to put forth some effort. The same thing with opportunity. We've got to get up. We've got to put, put forth effort. We've got to get up out of our comfy chair and see what opportunity is knocking on our door. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, and this is coming from the Amplified Bible. It says, For, for a wide door of opportunity for effectual service has opened to me there. One great and promising and many adversaries. One great and promising and many adversaries. Notice Paul writes that the wide door of opportunity has been open, but with many adversaries, with rivals, with opposition, with enemies. Now, you didn't just think Satan wasn't going to rear his ugly head and and it was just going to be a clean walk to the door, open it up, grab opportunity, and change the world. No, it's not that easy. Satan rears his ugly head. You didn't think the devil was just going to lay down and let you prosper, did you? He wasn't just going to sit down and let you be successful without a fight, did you? 
Not only do we have to get up, but we've got to get up and fight. We've got to get up and fight. And Satan is going to try and attack you. He's going to try to kill, steal, and destroy your opportunity, your purpose, your plan. He's going to do that because that's why he's here. That's, that, that's why he's here is to wreck your life. And he's going to try that. So not only do you got to get up and answer the opportunity, but you got to get up and fight Satan. How do we do that? It's real simple. It's here. It, it, it's in prayer. It's in worship. It's in your time of, of personal time with Christ. That's how you get the ammunition to fight Satan. We must get up. We've got to get up, number one, to answer opportunities knock. And number two, we've got to get up to take on Satan's fight. Now check this out. I watch sports all my life. All my life. I love sports. Love it. Even, even played some sports uh, back in the day, a long time ago. Played them. And I can remember whether it was the start of the game or the start of the second half or, or, or whatever, uh, we would be sitting there and there would be a knock on the door. What was that knock? It, it, it was the official, it was the referee saying, Coach, you team ready? Coach, let's take the field. Coach, it, it's time for battle. Coach, let's go to war. Coach, it, it, it's time to, to, to fight the enemy. Coach, it's, it's time to play against the other team. It was the referee knocking the door with an opportunity for us to take the field and win. I want to share something today. Never once has a game or match been won from the locker room. Never once. Never once. Now, I know some of you may comment later, technicality, forfeits, all that. I'm talking about you can't physically play another team and win the game from the locker room. You've got to answer that knock. What happens if you don't choose to go out on the field when the referee comes to knock and get the team? You're going to lose. You're going to lose. You never even put yourself in the position to win. You've got to hear this today. We're not going to grab a hold of the opportunity. We're not going to defeat Satan. We're not going to do the things that God has called us to do if we don't get up from our spiritual locker room. If we don't get up from our spiritual comfy chair, if we don't get up, we've got to get up and answer the knock. We've got to get up and be ready to fight for it. We've got to get up. Number two, if opportunity's knocking and, and if, if, I've, if I've gotten up and, I, and I'm making my way towards the door, then number two, I've got to understand that attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. Proverbs 17, verse 22, and this comes from the message version. It says, a cheerful disposition is good for your health. Gloom and doom leave your bone tired. Read that again. A cheerful disposition is good for your health. Gloom and doom leave you bone tired. Your attitude and perspective about your opportunity has everything to do with the outcome. Your attitude and perspective about your opportunity has everything to do with the outcome. Don't believe me? Let me share a biblical instant for you. The armies of Israel, they laid eyes on Goliath. And they were shocked, I'm sure, big fella. Like, bigger than Andre the Giant big, okay? They look at him and they say, I know there's a bunch of us, but like, uh, he's too big to kill. He's too big to kill. Fast forward, David comes around. My boy David, I, I love David. He, uh, he is the embodiment of, uh, he's the embodiment you know, of so many of us Christians, you know, they, they chase after God, but yet they, they mess up and trip up, but yet they get back up and do it right. So I love David for that. What does little David say? Little David saw Goliath. He's like, mm, yeah, he's, he's big, but uh, let me get my slingshot because he's too big to miss. 
Same opportunity. The armies of Israel had the same opportunity that we little David had. But two different attitudes and perspective. David said, give me my slingshot, I can do it because he's too big and ugly to miss. And the armies just saw the size. It's about your perspective and your attitude that's going to bring about the right outcome. Attitude is everything when it comes to opportunity. We must get rid of negative thinking. Whatever that negative thinking may be. That negative thinking may be your very own thoughts towards the opportunity. It could be your very own thoughts. A lot of times it is our very own thoughts. A lot of times we talk our own selves out of doing what God has us called to do. We, 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 we let negative thinking get in our heads. And, and, and before you know it, we've allowed that mindset to rid us of an opportunity. But see, there's also other people's thoughts. Other people's thoughts can, can affect our thinking towards an opportunity. We allow the voices of others to get in there, and before you know it, the voices of others and the thoughts of others then become our own very own thoughts towards opportunity, and again, we allow that opportunity to get away from us. Here's what we've got to do, church. We've got to maintain a positive perspective a positive outlook, a positive attitude, and we got to become more sensitive to the opportunities that God allows to knock on your door. You know God allows opportunities to knock on your door? Why? Well, first of all, He knows that you can handle it. Second of all, it's for His glory. Because people are going to see you answering the opportunity and they're going, wow, Mikey couldn't have done that by himself. Like, you, sh you should have heard Mikey speak in freshman year college speech class. He was terrible. He butchered a Bear Bryant speech. How does an Alabama fan butcher a Bear Bryant speech? Well, guess what? In freshman year speech class at Gadsden State Community College, I was looking at my transcripts the other day. It's not my best grade. Okay? Speech class. But yet, I get up and, 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 and speak on Wednesday nights to, uh, to teenagers. I, I, I speak on Sundays when I get the opportunity. Uh, God has made a way for me to be a much better speaker once I started following His will. I let the negative thoughts leave my mind. I let my negative thoughts leave my mind, and I answered a call. I took on an opportunity, and now I'm doing it. Way different than my, my freshman year speech class. It's all about attitude and perspective. We've got to have that. We've got to understand that. God wants to use us. And that's why he gives us the opportunity. He allows opportunity to knock on our door. But then he gives us the perfect free will to decide, hey, am I going to sit here and keep watching Wheel of Fortune? Or am I going to put the remote down, get up and answer the door and see exactly what this opportunity is that's knocking on my door? So number one, we got to get up and get up and fight. Number two, attitude is everything. So, so, so if, I've, if I've gotten up and I'm ready to fight and I, I've got a good attitude as I'm approaching the door, what happens... For point number three, when I open the door, it's real simple. No excuses, do it. No excuses, do it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 from the New International Version tells us this. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. The race that's marked out for us. It tells us as clear as day. Throw off everything that hinders. Throw off everything that hinders. Not one or two things, not some things, but everything. 
It says throw off everything that hinders. Can I tell you what this includes? It includes excuses. It includes excuses. So, so how many times in the physical has a door opened for us or has opportunity for us to do something knocked on our door or been presented to us only to be met with some type of excuse? Oh, it's, honey, it's raining. I can't go. Nah, nah, I would go, but it is too hot. I cannot go. I, I didn't have time to get ready, so uh, uh, count me out this time. I'll take a rain check maybe next time. Uh, well, you know what? I would go, but we're going down to the Sizzler. I already had some plans, so I can't do it. Yeah, it was a long night last night. They had a, they had a, uh, 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 the Golden Girls had a marathon on the Hallmark Channel, and I just stayed up too, too late watching about Blanche and Dorothy. So I, I'm just too tired and... Well, well, I, I would help you with that, but I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. We make excuses for a lot of things. And uh, if I'm the only one, then you maybe we need to have a good re time of repentance because we, we'll, we'll, we'll find a good excuse. But can I give you the, the bare-bone facts? Can I give you the honest truth? Can I give you the, the painful truth? The truth is, our physical excuses are basically the same as our spiritual excuses. Our physical excuses are basically the same as, as those spiritual excuses. Why, why we can't take hold of an opportunity that's presented itself. Why we can't do what God's asked us to do. Why we can't work on our purpose, plan, and calling that God's put in our life. Maybe, maybe we, we use excuses like, it's impossible. Without God, it absolutely is. That can't be done. It, it can't be. You're right. Without God, it can't be done. But guess who's lining up the opportunities for you? God. God's lining up those opportunities. So guess what? It can be done. I, I just don't have what it takes I, I don't have what it takes to work in the nursery, to work with the, the children, to work in the youth group. I, I, I don't have what it takes. You're exactly right. You don't have what it takes. I don't have what it takes. But Christ has exactly what we need to get the job done. Oh, oh it, it, it's, it's too risky. I, I, can't, I can't do that. It, it, it's, it's way too risky. There's never a risk with Jesus involved. There's never a risk with Jesus involved. The only risk is that you're going to upset people who in the grand scheme of things, opinions don't matter anyway. Listen, if, if I've got a choice to make the world happy or make Jesus happy, I'm, I'm picking Jesus every time. I'm picking Jesus every time. Because the world's opinions ain't keeping me out of a sinner's hell. All right, the, 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 the world's opinion is not going to matter when I'm sick as a dog and I need healing. Jesus matters. And then, and then finally, when opportunity knocks on our door, I love this one. When opportunity knocks on our door and it comes in the form of, of doing something that may or may not work, and, and we're quick with the excuse, well, well, what if it don't work? Well, what if it does work? What if it does work, and that's the exact thing that somebody needed to save their life from hell? What if it does work, and it's the exact thing that speaks to a family member's heart that saves them and heals them and brings them freedom and peace? What if it's the very thing that shakes the very foundation for revival to come forth in this day and age that we need? What if you not answering an opportunity is hindering revival from happening? What if? What if it does work? I want you to hear this, and I want you to hear it good, church. I want you to hear this and hear it very, very good. If you don't write down, if you don't take away anything else I said from today's message, understand this. God never gives us opportunities without first giving us the abilities to achieve them. 
He gives us the abilities. Can you see the abilities? Not necessarily. That may mean you have to get up and work and fight to obtain the abilities. Or, or, or you may have to polish up the abilities a little bit. You may have to polish those things up. Listen, I told you about my speech class. Can I tell you what was probably equally as bad as my Bear Bryant speech? My first speech or my first sermon to a youth class that I taught. That was probably equally bad or worse. But what did I do? I didn't make excuses. I didn't turn and run. I went to work and I polished and I studied more and I, I learned more and I, I grabbed hold of, of, of thinking and I, I watched other uh, student pastors and student ministers share and, and, and then I, I, I developed a style that wasn't as bad as my Bear Bryant speech and it wasn't as bad as my very first sermon in, in youth class. You have to work at some of the opportunities that's presented to you. We've got to get rid of the excuses and take hold of the opportunities that's given to us. And here's the deal. They're not just given to us by anybody. They're given to us by God, y'all. They're given to us by God. We as children of God, as a part of the kingdom of God, we can't become stagnant and non-operational because of our excuses. We can't become stagnant and non-operational. We can't allow our excuses to make us still. We've got to continue to move for the kingdom. We've got to continue to move for the kingdom. We've got to lose the excuses and open the door for opportunity and then just watch what God will do. Get up and be ready to fight. Attitude is everything. And then when you open the door, no excuses. Just do it. And if you'll do that, then we'll begin to see God move in those opportunities. We'll begin to see God move in those opportunities. I'm going to close now. And in closing, I want you to know that no matter what, opportunity is going to knock. Opportunity is knocking. Opportunity is going to be there. But then the ball's in your court. What are you going to do? with that opportunity are you going to go are you going to go sit there really still really quiet in hopes that the opportunity simply goes away because it can and it will or church are we going to hear opportunities knock and decide to get up put on a positive attitude and get rid of excuses and do whatever that opportunity is in front of us the kingdom of god advances when we as a believer answer the door and seize our opportunity. The kingdom of God advances when we as a believer answer the door and seize our opportunity. Whether it's the opportunity to minister to the lost, pray with the sick, encourage the broken, serve somewhere in ministry, open a Christian business, be a God-fearing leader in the community, or be the light of Christ that your family or others around you desperately need, are you going to answer opportunities knock this morning? Are you going to answer opportunities knock tonight? Are you going to answer opportunities knock on Monday morning when you don't want to go to work and when it's real easy to come up with an excuse to avoid the opportunity? Are you going to answer opportunities knock when, it, when it's knocking in the dead heat of July and, and, and you know it's just a little too hot to answer opportunity right now. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Are you going to answer opportunities knock? Here's what I want to do. I'm going to pray for each of us. Maybe you're watching and the opportunity that's knocking is really Jesus knocking on your heart. Jesus wanting to be Lord of your life Maybe you're watching and you need salvation. You need Jesus to set you free and wash you clean. I'm going to pray first for these. And then I ask if this is you, simply ask Jesus to come into your heart. Simply ask Jesus to come into your heart and set you free. You want to know how you get God-based opportunities, handpicked by God opportunities? Believe in Him. Give Him your life. Ask Him into your heart. That's how that happens. So that's going to be the first part of my prayer today. 
If, if you need to pray for Jesus to come into your heart, pray that. It's real simple. It's like you're talking to a best friend. Simply talk to him and ask him into your heart. Then, I'm going to pray for each of us that need to answer the knock of opportunity. Opportunity standing there, knocking on our door. And we need to answer that opportunity. We need to answer that opportunity. God wants us to use us in ways that will prosper our lives and the kingdom of God. And if that's you, as I pray, I just want you to simply grab hold of the opportunity that God has presented you. Pray that prayer with me. And, 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 and then get up. Stop making excuses. Fix your attitude. And see what that opportunity is that you need to take hold of. So first I'm going to pray over salvations, and then I'm going to pray over opportunities, and then we're going to come back and close out the service. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the word today, God. I thank you for what you've said through me, God. I pray that the words that were said and spoke today, Father God, resonate in someone's spirit, that they, that they stick to someone's heart, Father God. And today, if there be someone out there that needs to answer the, the knock of you knocking on their heart's door, Father God, I pray that today, Father God, that they will be saved set free and wash clean, Father God. Lord, I pray for anyone that, that needs you into their life, Father God, to simply ask you, Lord, I need you to save me. Lord, I need you to wash me clean. Lord, I need you to make me fresh and anew. And if they'll do that, God, they'll have a relationship that will produce opportunities upon opportunities upon opportunities, Father God. But the greatest opportunity stands before them today, God, and that's them calling on you as their personal Savior. So, God, we pray over them today, God, Lord, that, 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 that they will make the decision to make you Lord of their life. Next, Lord, we come before you and pray over those of us that, that have opportunity knocking at the door, God. We've got opportunity knocking, Father God. Lord, I pray that you'll give us the boldness to get up, Father God. The boldness to be ready to fight Satan when he comes against us with those opportunities, God. Next, I pray, God, that you will give us a good attitude, Father God, Lord, that, that we can walk towards that opportunity with the mind of Christ, God, and we can take hold of that opportunity without excuses, without anything that, that, that stands in the way of us doing what you've appointed and what you put at the door knocking, God. Lord, today I pray uh, 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 across the uh, Internet, across the web, Father God, across this area, God, Lord, that today people will stop making excuses about their opportunities and that they will take hold of their opportunities, God, and that we will see the kingdom built up, Father God, Lord, that we will see impact for the kingdom, God, and, Lord, that great things will be done in your name, God. Lord, again, I thank you for the word today, Father God. I thank you for the worship, God. Lord, I thank you and praise you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to let us know this week if you answered the door for opportunity. Simply go on to our Facebook page. Message myself personally. Message Pastor Mark. Let us know. If you answer an opportunity and God begins to work in that opportunity, let us know. We want to hear the testimonies from this. And by all means, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please let us know that you made that decision today. And if you made that decision, we're happy and proud of you today. Now remember, next Sunday at 10.30 a.m., we're going to be right back here in the sanctuary at Faith Worship Center. So you can either join us live here in the sanctuary or we will be streaming at 10.30 a.m. on our Facebook page. You can join us there. Don't forget to send your prayers up for Pastor Mark and Miss Kathy. We trust that God's got his hand on them. Guys, we love you so much. Thank you for joining us today at Faith Worship Center Online. We trust that God's going to truly bless you in all that you do this week. God bless. Thank you so much for joining us today right here at Faith Worship Center Online. In the sanctuary, live stream on our Faith Worship Book page. You're a part of Faith Worship Center next week. Now, I'd also like to remind you of the ways that you can give this week. Number one, you can go online to www.the-fwc.church, follow the give link, and you can give online. Or you could take one of the envelopes that you received and simply mail it back to the church or 
Tomorrow, Monday morning from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., you could bring your tithe and offering by right here to Faith Worship Center. So don't miss your opportunity to give and sow into what God's doing right here at Faith Worship Center. Now, we can't wait to see you next week right here at Faith Worship Center. We trust that God's going to bless you and you're going to have a great week.